Hello. Uh, this episode's gonna be a little, little different, considering I am rolling producerless today. My producer, the disembodied voice, is uh, taking a little break right now, but I'll be doing the show just fine. No. Uh, these past couple weeks, you know, I didn't do one last week because, you know, if you didn't know, I um, well, I, I did a commentary on the debates live as it was happening, and. I also put out a music, another music video, this time uh, without using a, the music video generator. I just pulled um, some public domain video assets and I edited it together to the track I made, which has done surprisingly well considering I thought it was just only something that I kind of liked, but you know, I'm glad it got some traction. Uh, now let's move along. Got, gotta go fast with this one. Now, the, for math, I'm now generally getting worried about the health of my math professor because just the other day, he, he just brings in this bag. He's like, what's in the bag? I'll tell you later. And we're all getting kind of worried, because like, is he, is he going crazy? He's like, no. He brings he's, it's a bag with a, a, a metal chain in it. A metal chain in it. And why? He's like, well, what's the shape of this chain? Like, I say, oh, it's a parabola. It's like, that's what people thought for a while. And then it turns out that it's not. And then he just writes some stuff on the board. It's like, this is what the shape of a chain is. And at this point, the class is like, what does any of this have to do with the lesson? And he's like, so what's the shape of the chain called? He writes this thing on the board. It's like, oh, so what's that mean? Oh, this word means the shape of a chain. So that was a wonderful recursive segment. What a chain is defined mathematically. I'm just as confused as you are. History, we're getting close to our first test, which is as the time of this recording, uh, tomorrow. But the time when it gets uploaded, probably I would have already taken it. So time is weird like that, especially in the realm of YouTube videos recorded medium. So we get to the Enlightenment and Scientific Revolution, so he has a bit of a discussion on the two competing philosophical viewpoints of uh, mankind that came out of the Enlightenment. And I just realized I said mankind instead of humankind, which means this video is going to get flagged by YouTube heroes for uh, b being ragingly misogynist because they use some uh, gendered language. I'm not sure if you can tell, if you can hear any weird hissing from the audio, but it's because this episode is shot in Florida thunderstorm o vision and uh, isn't that just looking lovely out there? Yeah, yeah, and uh, considering, like, whoa, how is he doing that? Uh, let's point at this thing. So I, I, I broke down and bought a tripod because uh, I was using this to hold the camera, which I mean, get over here. Ugh, okay. So the camera, would rest here, right? And then, as you can, I'm not sure how well you can see, but it's a music stand that's uh, kind of tipped over, and it's clipped onto this, this chunk of wood, and then that would kind of tilt the music stand until it was nice and level. And then you would tie the camera down right, right around here with the strings, and then it would hold its place and you would kind of wiggle it, and uh, so it was all nice and steady. Now, the advantage of a tripod is that I can, you know, move around. Alright. So now that looking right at me, we've got this personal connection going. Uh, let, like, comment, subscribe for for tripod. Like, comment, subscribe for tripod. So we get into this discussion of the nature of uh, mankind and you know, big old things. So everyone starts talking over each other and I'm like, is this gonna go out into a full blown, you know? <gasps> Fortunately, it didn't. Um, we were kind of have a, were able to have a reasoned discussion about these two philosophies. So ca carry that discussion out on below. What do you, do you think? Uh, man existed. Me again with that that gendered language. You know, did uh, people in ancient times where are they fundamentally good and the whole social contract theory of government and you know, like like the whole Bill of Rights, like that idea. Or do you think that? Like, people need a strong government to hold back their worst parts. But now, the real meat of the video, which, you know, if it wasn't for the fact that we have a, a nice storm going, let's uh, go out here, shall we? Get this. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure how well you can see that. Um, yeah, it's uh, getting pretty hairy out there. You know, it's... Kind of serious. If it wasn't for this, I was planning on uh, taking you to uh, to the park here and have a discussion about uh, something that my art history teacher said that 
that kind of bothered me. And you're thinking, what what could bother me? You know, I'm a pretty easygoing guy. I don't get get triggered usually. But uh, this this time, yeah, this time this, this time I got I got triggered. But but like in a good way, you know. Again, I want this head on. Applied directly to the forehead. Viewpoint for this discussion because you're studying the Renaissance in art history. You know, it's a very important time in art history. Subscribe to the traditional idea of theory. Subscribe. S subscribe. Uh, it's a rebirth of European cultural importance, I guess. And so you get all these great works of art coming out. Like, it's very good, it's very nice. Then uh, our professor makes the claim that Renaissance period was the high point of human culture, the absolute peak, the pinnacle, and then it's just all been downhill today, until today, and that the modern technology and the internet is making us all dumber, more idiotic. And that viewpoint um, offends me on a, on a personal level. Like, not just to, like specifically all the Renaissance, is the high, not like in the details, but Believing the idea that the, that this one moment was our our golden age and everything else is uh, garbage, it's, for me it's a very narrow-minded viewpoint and it's just really reductive to any sort of intellectual discussion. Fortunately, I was smart enough to realize to just keep my mouth shut while she's blabbering on about how we're all stupid and that we don't take the time to properly dis uh, put reverence that was a big flash of lightning. Uh, until into our like our structures and our lives to really, uh, see even even I'm trying to make an episode here, in nature. Could you give me a minute? Uh, we don't uh, we don't contemplate our the nature of ourselves in relationship to the divine. And I and I know I'm smart enough to know that you don't challenge the professor uh, unless you really have got like your ducks in a row. Like you got, you got all your ducks in a row, and so I just, you know, kept my mouth shut and just held it in. Um, now, as I said previously, I'm gonna let it out. For me, that like, she, like the idea, like the Renaissance was great. You got all this architecture and art, it's fine. But for me, the the modern age and the fact that we don't have to contemplate the divine nature of every single building that we build, because you know, uh, if since uh, if you commission a building, I mean a, re a reasonable size one, you you will, with all likelihood, like live to see constructed. In contrast to back then, where like if you wanted uh, your a new church built, you would commission it, raise the money, get started building on it, die, and have your apprentices finish it for you. And so you kind of have to be all divine and deep about it when you're uh, when buildings take hundreds of years to create. And the fact that professor can't see the, the, the wonder and the mundane nature of things, and that, that she's so dismissive of the internet. And it's like she actually uh, went out of her way and said that, actually, kind of like as a straw man question, asked, like, do you think people are using the internet and modern technology to enrich ourselves? Fortunately, like, she had most of the lights dimmed, so I'm nodding. Um, and she's like, she says, no, people aren't using the internet to enrich themselves. And. Uh, that really made me angry because I use the internet to enrich myself all the time. I use it to learn about the world around me. I use it to help me with my homework. I mean, something as basic as that. She she goes on. She does this like every day, like complaining about, decrying that the modern society is falling apart and we're all getting dumb. And I'm like, sh sh shut up. I'm just. Sh shut up, please. You, you are the problem. You are the problem. And instead of constantly going on and on about the great past and holding that over the heads of modern ge generations and artists and thinkers, instead of holding that past over their head and forcing them to, you know, think that they'll never be as good as this, this was the best, like, take that, just go away and let the the new people come up with new ideas and just give them room to think and to grow and to breathe instead of forcing your interpretation of the past on them. Just, just let it be instead, instead of constantly complaining that your precious worldview is being destroyed. You know, this one was originally this episode. Uh, 
uh, it was gonna be a little, it was gonna be, you know, a little funnier than it was, but it turned out to be kind of angry. Um, sorry about that. The jokes I was gonna be kind of really depended on me going somewhere and taking you guys with me, but, uh, I'm gonna use that roll of thunder to sign off and say, you know what, no, no sign off. No telling you how to think. Like, comment, subscribe, beg. Uh, you know what? Have a nice day.